So, got it working, sort of. Bit of makeshift uh, thingy. This is annoying hard cable, and um, well, if it gets caught somewhere, that would be a, could be a disastrous if there's going coolant all over the place. I have these uh, ones to install, but uh, yeah, <laughs> you know the drill. It probably will work with this for like half a year, or <laughs> who knows. Um, I measured the old spindle, the air-cooled spindle, at, at the same position, so I just replaced the spindle. I did not record that, but the decibel C-weighted in slow was 87.5. So let's see what we get at the same 24,000 RPM. I wonder how much the, uh, the PFD itself is. So yeah, um, the PFD makes quite a lot of noise. Solid 10 dB, so that's very nice. Now I'll leave it running for a while because my coolant, well, I'll just for now, I'll. Oh, that sounds really nice. Except for the VFD, that's blowing really hard. <clears throat> so, this is my uh, cooling container. Um, I drilled a few holes and I had one of a few clamps that, like these uh, pillars to connect the whole thing. There's just an aquarium pump inside there doing its thing and I didn't have enough coolant at least I was afraid I had not enough so what I did is um, I had five liter of coolant five bottles I filled two of the empty bottles with water and then uh, put the lid on and put it in the box because the box is a bit too huge for the amount of coolant I use. Uh, I put a probe in there, temperature probe, and I was gonna let the spindle run for let's say half an hour and see what the temperature does because uh, this is just a box with a, a amount of coolant and it will get warm. There's no way it's it's getting chilled or anything. So uh, we'll see if that's enough. This seems to be around the temperature in here. So not much happened yet. I'll leave it running at let's say 20k because I'm hardly using 24,000 rpm so or shall I go 24,000 I'll, I'll go 24,000 Measure the spindle as well. So 35 degrees. 
why every fucking battery is empty? <laughs> well, no shell. I don't know. It feels... Warmish, but not hot. Not, not like my other spindle, but... Because I can feel it's a little bit warm, it's warmer than my body temperature, I guess. And the bearings are same temperature, which is good. My old one became really hot, like really hot to the touch. So that's good. Sound wise, I'm pretty, really, really pleased. Now, because this thing does not have a radiator, this will take uh, quite some while before it drops in temperature. See, it's still hovering 34, 35 degrees. So this was a run of half an hour without load, but at a higher RPM. So you can imagine if you do some heavy cutting, it might, the temperature goes up. Uh, and we moved around 10 degrees upwards in half an hour. Most things I do are not longer than half an hour, but let's say 11 degrees in in a longer session, like 40 minutes. Yeah. So it might need a radiator or more fluid, but you know, cooling down more fluid also takes longer. So you can like do a longer session and then the cooling does is also longer. Um, yeah, so another thing I'm worried about is this pump, I'm here now and I can hear it, you know, pump. It's hard to see if it pumps anything, but it does. Now, what if the pump fails, then the cooling fails on my spindle, and I won't notice it, and I will uh, gladly burn the, um, the coils. So, I don't know. I looked around online and you have like from the Chinese uh, cheap ass water chillers for um, CO2 lasers. That might be an option, but I need to find out. There is a alarm in it, but I don't know if it's like a temperature alarm and what it puts out. Like, if, can I use it to uh, disable the spindle for instance? And then I'll only break a cutter. That's option one. Or I can send a signal to the uh, Mac 3 that it has to quit doing whatever what it's doing. But still, the spindle needs to stop as well, because otherwise I burn the spindle. So there is a reason why it's nice to have everything controlled by Mac 3. On the other hand, yeah, if Mac 3 fails, then uh, it doesn't stop either. So I'm not too sure yet. Um, also, I want to know if this chiller also monitors the flow. So if the pump fails, that it also puts out an alarm because, uh, yeah, the temperature inside the chiller might be nice, but if the pump fails, the, the spindle still, um, well, burns up. So I was thinking either I make this whole system myself, but since the chiller is like 150, if I make it myself, I have to uh, at least have a water-cooled radiator, a pump, uh, something to measure the flow rate so I know if the pump failed, and a temperature thingy that can measure the temperature and if it's too high it shuts it off or something. So I don't know, the chiller is, might be nice, I don't know. I'll have to look up if, uh, if it puts out a alarm for the flow rate. If so, then that's actually all I want. And I'm thinking of maybe doing that instead of cobble together something myself, which usually is, um, yeah, well, if I put in four hours, that also costs money. Or at least you can think it like this. I could make a... Uh, oh. Stuff I can sell in the meantime. Which uh, hopefully is more than 80 euros. <laughs> or 150. Anyhow, so far I'm pretty pleased. Stop whining, you stepper motors. 
So the pump is running, that's nice. Uh, I'll leave it running a little bit. is the this one yeah and so now I need a cooler or a more silent dust extraction. 